Hello, thank you for joining CBS News Primetime. I'm John Dickerson. We start immediately tonight because it has happened again. The 48th mass shooting in the United States this year, Kansas City, added to the awful list of place names. A Super Bowl celebration added to the list that includes worship services, school classes, 4th of July celebrations, places where gunfire turned joy to terror in an instant. At least one person is dead and more than 20 are hurt. Many of them are children between the ages of 6 and 15. Officials with Children's Mercy Hospital spoke earlier and confirmed all pediatric patients are expected to make full recoveries. The one word I would just use to describe what we saw and how they felt when they came to us was fear. Uh, this is nothing that you ever want to have happen, and you um, especially don't want it to happen in a situation where it is a mass casualty type of situation. You don't know how many you're going to get, what the response is going to be from trying to reunite people who might have gotten separated. And so while our staff all went into action, um, they have a lot of questions and need some help too. Kansas City police say three people have been taken into custody in connection with the shooting. For the latest on the ground, here's Neil Jones from our Kansas City affiliate, KCTV. This is the moment that the victory celebration turned violent. Gunfire. Screams. As a horrifying reality set fans, including families, running for their lives. We have multiple victims over here. You can see first responders giving CPR and fans being loaded onto stretchers. I hear down, 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 everybody down. 800 law enforcement officers were on site, many running toward the gunfire, taking two armed suspects into custody. As all this was unfolding, we were covering the celebration live. And you've got kids and you've got elderly people and you're not expecting something like this. It, it was just as, as horrible a feeling as you can imagine. People began to run as hard as they could in all directions. People knocked down, children knocked down. A nearby level one trauma center is now caring for some of the victims. There is uh, one deceased person. Our gunshot wound total has went up to 22. Late today, Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes tweeted, quote, praying for Kansas City. We were here for a safe celebration. And because of two bad actors or more, it is why we're standing here today. This is absolutely a tragedy, the likes of which we would have never expected in Kansas City, and the likes of which we will remember for some time. FBI and ATF agents remain on the scene to help with the investigation. They were here as part of parade security. Law enforcement officials tell us there is no evidence that this was an act of terrorism. John? Neil Jones, thank you. Joining me now is Austin Pritchett and Astor Bubbles. They were at the parade when the shooting began. First of all, to both of you, we are very glad that you are safe and able uh, to, join, to join us. Um, Austin, let me start with you. What was the first thing that went through your head when you started hearing gunfire? So it was initially when we were about to exit the rally and just end it. And so you hear the gunshots and, you know, initially in my head, I was like, oh, you know, fireworks. But then it clicked. Yeah, I was in the military. So then immediately it clicked. I was like, oh, no, that's gunshots. And I was like, oh, gunshots. And, and I looked, looked at each other and ran and towards. Yeah, we looked down and you could see the crowd start to run away. And then we saw people start to drop to, sorry. We saw people drop to the ground and it was just a surreal event. Aster, had you ever thought before today because there are a lot of school, there are a lot of shootings in America. Have you ever thought, if I'm in a situation like that, this is what I'd do? Uh, no, I don't think anything can really prepare you for what you're going to do in that situation. I, I can't imagine this ever happening, but we ended up being right there. And Austin, you mentioned you were you were in the. Sorry, go ahead, Astor. Oh, I said our first thought was just to help. Did you know, uh, uh, Aster, where the, the shooting was coming from, or was it just a, a sense of chaos and, and um, mayhem? 
I don't know if I know exactly where the shots came from, but I could hear the general area and I saw people go down. Um, and Austin, what was your reaction? You said you'd been in the military. Had you, um, I mean, what kicked in uh, in your mind? Had you ever thought something like this might happen, that you would be around uh, gunfire? So, you know, we go through active shooter training every year and everything like that. So, you know, immediately I recognized it as that. I kind of, we waited until the scene kind of cleared out, uh, you know, with the crowd running. And my first instinct was to just, you know, after I saw everything was clear, I didn't see the shooter in the vicinity. We just ran down and tried to see if we could help out the victims. Unfortunately, I, we weren't able to get there and like help out before paramedics arrived. So th thankfully the paramedics arrived quickly. So that was a blessing, but it, it just, you know, your fight or flight kind of just kicks in and you just make your decision. Aster, tell me what your thinking was about going to the parade, what you were hoping for today, what your thoughts were before the mayhem started. Well, it was my first Chiefs parade, so I didn't really know what to expect. Obviously not what happened, but I was excited. I mean, everyone was telling me how big of an event it was and it was supposed to be super fun and we were we were having a really good time until that happened definitely nothing near what i expected and austin have you have you talked to others who were there what's been the um you the common reaction to others who've been around as as you've all processed this so the thing that I think really surprised us the most is, so we ended up walking down the street uh, uh, to get away. We saw a crowd of people run back towards us as if there was another shooter. I can't confirm whether that's true or not, but it seemed like there was some kind of mayhem going on up there. So we ended up like booking it down an alley. People followed us and it was a dead end. And it was barricaded pushed over the barricades and we jumped into the parking garage and we were helping lift people through the parking garage ledges to get out of there. And then we exit the parking garage and it just seems like everything's normal. Like no one knows what's going on. People are still kind of like walking around in front of the World War One Memorial. And we ended up going to the top and there was some like news station booths uh, up there along with some food trucks. And we went to one of the news station booths and we were like, you know, there, hey, there's an active shooter out here. Like, does anyone know what's going on? And no one up there knew what was going on. Aster, do you, sometimes when this happens, people say, how did this happen in our community? Um, do you feel that way, or uh, this is the 48th mass shooting in America this year? Um, shocking, but was it surprising? I mean, it's shocking and surprising, but at the same time, like, I, I'm i in school for criminology and criminal justice, so I've read about this so much, and you your instincts just kicked in. You you don't expect it to happen, but it happens, and you just instinctively run and try to help or get to safety. Austin, very briefly, you were shaking your head. I mean, it's it's appalling at this point. You know, at what point do we quit with the, you know, bluntly thoughts and prayers? Obviously, it's not helping. You know, this is a epidemic in america 48 we're in february 48 mass shootings not even two full months of the year is ridiculous and it just keeps getting worse year in and year out and you know i own guns at home so but something has to change like and earlier in the parade somebody passed out and we we were carrying them to try to get them to help and it was impossible to find anyone even near where we were to get her to help. Well, we are very glad that you are both safe and we really appreciate you giving us um, your explanation of what happened and what it was like to be there. Um, Austin and Astor, thank you so much. Brian Locke from KMBZ, our CBS radio affiliate, has been following the story. Um,
Tell me about the community right now. Shocked, um, completely bewildered. The, the fact that this could happen at the end of such a joyous celebration for Kansas City is it, it, just, it's, le it's left a lot of people just in a total state of shock. Um, most Kansas Cityans can't believe this happened on today of all days. You know, we're looking at 22 people shot, one person dead, 21 people injured, children shot, three people in custody, uh, multiple scenes from this shooting. It's just, it's a shock and it's not, it's not what anyone expected from this day. And Brian, I assume there are other celebrations that were planned. Um, what, what happens now? Well, I, I think what happens now, the, the best example of that is what happened immediately after those shots started ringing out. Everybody dispersed. Um, as you said, this was a day of celebration. It's a big party. The party was going to continue. The parade was over. The rally was coming to an end. But people were going to spend their day downtown. It was a beautiful day in Kansas City. Sunny, not a cloud in the sky, 62 degrees, just perfect, a perfect day for a parade. And people, kids had the day off from school. Families were downtown. They were going to spend their time downtown. And that was all cut short. People just scrambled and evacuated the area quickly, instantly. Downtown is now, it's empty, and it's so heartbreaking to see on a night like tonight. Indeed it is. Brian Locke, thank you so much for being with us. During a press conference Wednesday, the Kansas City Police Chief spoke about the next steps in the department's investigation. Right now, we are in the investigative portion of that, collecting evidence, um, whether that be digital evidence or physical evidence. That, that is what we are, we are doing right now. And we're also conducting interviews. Obviously, we have um, several victims that we need to, to have a conversation with, to ask questions, also witnesses. So there's a lot of work ahead in, in this. This is just the beginning stages, but um, we are moving as fast as we can. And Sam Vinograd joins me now. She's a CBS News contributor and a former assistant secretary for counterterrorism, threat prevention, and law enforcement policy for the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Your first reaction to what you've learned so far about today. Well, my first reaction is horror that this has happened again and that so many in innocent lives were uh, impacted by what unfolded in Kansas City. But I have to tell you, John, I'm not surprised. Uh, having worked on mass shootings at the Department of Homeland Security, our playbook for these kinds of incidents is still ingrained in my memory because they happen so often. In listening to the press conference, it is very clear that authorities are really in the most nascent stages of the investigation, which is not surprising. Despite extensive planning by the city of Kansas City as well as uh, federal and state partners, there were contingencies that law enforcement officials could not foresee, could not prepare for, and we saw one unfold today. I would imagine that from an investig investigatory standpoint, authorities are questioning the individuals in custody. They're running their identities against data sets to see if they have any kind of criminal history or any other type of derogatory information that may be relevant, looking at their social media, uh, as well, and also talking to witnesses in the vicinity to try to determine the actual course of events that led up to guns being drawn and unfortunately shots being fired. How do you read, Sam, um, and within the bounds of, you know, recognizing that this is supposition, how do you read uh, what you have heard from officials in terms of the investigation? Um, uh, in other words, they're, the, the, whether the suspects that they, or whether the people they have in custody might very well be the suspects, whether there's people might be at large. What do, how do you read the public comments so far about who might have done this? My biggest note of caution right now is not to jump to any conclusions. We really don't know. It does appear that law enforcement um, does feel this to be an isolated incident. They are not telling the public to remain vigilant. So it appears that at this preliminary stage, they do feel that the actual threat associated with this event is contained, which is reassuring. But we really don't know whether these suspects are the only suspects they believe were involved, if there may be others, or if these suspects were in fact actually involved in the shooting. So I would caution our viewers to wait to hear from law enforcement authorities about what comes out of these interviews with the individuals and the other steps that I articulated. Sam, in a, in a situation like this, given the firepower that's readily available, how much can the best hardened target do against somebody who's got what's 
uh, available in American gun stores. I mean, you can prepare, but but give us the sense of how much you can prepare for and how much, you, you know, no matter how prepared you are, you can't stop. Well, hard security preparations alone are not going to solve the gun epidemic. In many hard security targets, there are perimeters set up. There's inspections of individuals before they enter a facility, whether it be um, pat down, there's some other form of technology to see if they have a weapon on their person. But outside of that perimeter, individuals are not uh, undergoing the kind of screening that would necessarily detect a weapon. And in this case, I don't imagine, for example, that a parking garage had that kind of security perimeter set up. So we can't have a security perimeter around the whole country, unfortunately. And so individuals who have weapons, particularly concealed carry licenses or even open carry in some states, means that weapons can come closer to security perimeters and to mass density events like parades. Sam, very quickly, the Kansas City police chief talked about first uh, responders and, and police running towards the shooting. How crucial is that uh, in, in the initial moments after something like this happens? The presence of over 800 uh, law enforcement officials, not to mention other first responders that were present, more than likely saved countless lives today. And we should all be eternally grateful to them for running toward danger and for what they do every day to keep us safe. Amen. Sam Vinograd in Washington. Thank you.